Dr. Ken here with you. We're now up to reflection and awe number 17 in our cognitive skills toolbox and I've subtitled this Be Amazed, Be Very Amazed. Electrotechnology and the energy we know as electricity is amazing stuff. So stop and take time to think. Electrical physics is difficult because you can't see it, smell it, taste it, hear it or feel it. This is why it was only really discovered in an understandable way around 1820. So people like Andresio Voltara, Michael Faraday in the early 1800s, and that's only 200 years ago or five generations. Compared with the earliest record in history of about 5,000 years ago, then electricity is only very, very, very recent in comparison. So compared to 5,000 years, we've only had 200 years to play with and try and get our heads around electricity. So it's taken a long time to discover because it is non-sensory. You can't see it, hear it, touch it, taste it or smell it. Electricity and magnetism are very closely linked and there is no definitive explanation or definition. Electron theory is just that, a theory. It's an educated guess. Quantum physics has electrons jumping in and out of existence and again, it's just another theory. Then think about the conservation of energy, E equals mc squared. Energy is never destroyed or lost, simply transformed from one state to another. There is something transcendent about energy and electrical energy in particular. It kind of describes our universe as infinite. It's infinitely small and it's infinitely large. There is more going on here than just the component parts. So that's what we're talking about here. There's a lot more going on than just the component parts of what we might call electricity. Reductionism. That is what science often tries to do. And unfortunately, electrotechnology is a science and we tend to break everything down into its component parts to understand it. Can't be done with electrical energy. You've got the Large Hadrian Collider, promised this and failed. They promised they would be able to get to the genesis particle. Well, all they discovered was more particles below the particles. Again, our universe, our cosmos, is as infinitely small as it is infinitely large. The need to understand that science is just only one way of knowing something. So this reductionist approach of science is just one way of knowing things. You can know things through history and you can know things through tradition. So we need to understand that science and its reductive approach is only one way to know stuff. Now into the world of matter physics and transcendence. Don't let the big words scare you. Just as metacognition, metaphysics means meta means just beyond. So metaphysics is beyond that which is physical. Transcendence is what makes you a human, not just an animal, a sapien. Transcendence is the ability to discern that the whole is more than the sum of its parts. An example is a sculpture, and I've put a picture of David over here. David is more than just marble. He is more than just the sum of his anatomy. He was a real person of history, and we know much about him from the Bible. So there are three levels of metaphysics here. There is a piece of marble. There is the shape of a human carved out of marble. And then there is the actual person himself, David. So there are actually transcendent metaphysics going on here and being able to understand that 
being able to wrap your head around those two and three levels of metaphysical understanding is another cognitive skill that we can use to help us understand and deal with the complexity of electrotechnology. So this metaphysical ability to transcend and understand beyond the direct physicality is a fundamental aspect of being able to build mental models. By the way, maths is just a mental or a conceptual modelling system, as I've explained in previous slides. It's just another way of knowing. There's a mathematical way of knowing, and there is a science way of knowing. Maths is not science, and science is not maths. Even though the two do work closely together, they are two different things, two different systems, two different ways of knowing. So without tr transcendence, we would just be smarter apes, which clearly we are not. We transcend all of that. We can see the parts that make up things, and we know that the sum of the parts make more than the whole. So by understanding, what can we take home by reflecting and standing in awe of this energy source we call electricity? Well, electrical physics is difficult to fathom, first and foremost. It will take time, it will take practice, it will take effort to comprehend. And you may even have to take some risks that there's some parts of it you won't comprehend until a little further down the track. We can't deal with electricity directly. We will always be one, two, three steps removed from the energy itself. We need to recognize this and put strategies in place to cope with the reality of that. Hence, my cognitive toolbox, to give you some skills to be able to deal with all this abstractiveness. Four, Remember your transcendent creature and you do have the capacities required to cope with the complexities of electricity. There are many who have gone before you, there'll be many that come after you that will understand. But remember, you are a transcendent creature and you do have the capability and the capacity to deal with the complexities of electrical physics. You have a big jump on Volta and Faraday. So use the springboard of their knowledge and the knowledge of others and your own abilities to learn and model electricity, to work out the models in your own heads. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick slideshow on reflection and awe. It's all about having the capabilities. I've demonstrated that you do have the skills you are a sentient being, you have the ability to deal with this level of complexity and there are many others that have gone before you so you can help your learning by understanding how they learned about electricity and how they applied it, how your teachers use it, how they apply it, how other students in your class learn and apply it will also help you. So thank you for listening. This is Dr. Ken signing off.